In the depths of time, during an era when our planet wore a different face, the Ice Age reigned with its unquestionable power. Over 30,000 years ago, the Earth was a harsh, unpredictable world, full of colossal wonders. In this frozen landscape, where survival was a daily art, two apex predators stood at the top of the food chain. On one side, early humans, emerging beings with creative minds and hands skilled in tool making. On the other, the gray wolf, a social and intelligent hunter whose complex strategies had made it one of history's most successful predators. For thousands of years, the paths of these two rivals rarely crossed in peace. They fought for the same resource, meat which meant life. The fire of human camps kept the wolves at a safe distance, and the haunting howl of the packs at night reminded humans they were not alone. There was no sign that this cold rivalry would be the beginning of one of the most amazing and enduring alliances in the history of life on Earth. This is the story of that impossible pact. In any population, there is diversity. Among wolf packs, too, personalities differed. Some were bold, some aggressive, and others unusually curious. The survival of the friendliest theory suggests that this extraordinary story began not with the strongest wolf, but with the boldest. Perhaps a young wolf who had not yet found its place in the pack hierarchy, or an outcast driven to the brink of desperation by hunger. The mesmerizing scent of roasted meat challenged its millennia-old instincts. While its kin waited cautiously in the darkness for leftovers, this one wolf made a fateful decision. Step by step, with a lowered body, it approached the forbidden territory. This small move, this breaking of an ancient taboo, set in motion a wave in the history of evolution that would forever change the future of both species. No, but I think it's coming from over there. The first reaction of the humans was a mix of fear and distrust. This creature was a symbol of the dangers of the wild world. But this wolf's body language was different. It wasn't baring its teeth. Instead, by lowering its tail and flattening its ears, it sent signals of submission. Perhaps an experienced hunter, known for understanding animal behavior, or a curious child, noticed this difference. A half-eaten bone from the evening meal was gently tossed towards the darkness. A moment of hesitation. Then with great caution the wolf came forward, took the prize, and quickly disappeared into the shadows. This simple exchange was an unwritten contract. A clear message that crossed species boundaries. I am not a threat to you if you are a resource for me. A fragile truce was formed under the starry sky of the Ice Age. This new neighbor soon proved to have an unexpected value. The wolf's senses were incredibly evolved. Its olfactory bulb was 40 times larger than a human's, and it could hear sounds at frequencies imperceptible to the human ear. It became a living alarm system. One night, the silence was broken by the approach of a deadly danger. Before any human could notice, the wolf's warning barks woke the camp. This sound was not a howl, it was a direct and immediate communication. What was that? Humans realized that the presence of this creature added a layer of security to their fragile lives. In return, the wolf benefited from regular food and protection from its own larger competitors. It was a classic symbiotic relationship in which both sides gained a vital advantage. Over generations, a powerful, albeit unconscious, selection process began. Wolves that were naturally less fearful and more inclined to cooperate had better access to human food sources, and consequently, a better chance of surviving and passing on their genes. This selection gradually brought about profound physical and behavioral changes. A phenomenon called neotenny occurred, 
the retention of juvenile features into adulthood. Muzzles became shorter and skulls wider, a face that appeared less threatening. Their coat colors changed from a uniform gray camouflage to varied patterns. Most importantly, their behavior transformed. Howling, used for long-distance communication, gave way to barking, a way to get the attention of their nearby human companions. These new creatures were no longer wolves. They were proto-dogs, the first chapter in the Book of Domestication. This alliance soon shifted from a defensive posture to an offensive collaboration. Humans discovered that these four-legged companions would revolutionize their hunting techniques. The speed and endurance of the dogs allowed them to pursue prey for hours, a feat impossible for humans. Their incredible sense of smell could follow an animal's trail hours after it had passed. In a coordinated hunt, the dogs would flush prey from its hiding place, tire it out, and guide it towards the human's ambush. This deadly collaboration dramatically increased hunting success rates. The dog was no longer just a guardian. It was a living hunting tool and a strategic partner that ensured the survival of the entire human group. The real turning point occurred when the first generation of pups was born inside human camps. These creatures opened their eyes to a world where humans were part of their natural environment. From birth, they accepted humans as members of their pack, their family. This process of imprinting created deep emotional bonds. For the first time in history, an animal was loved not just for its utility, but as an individual, a companion. Sit. Humans gave them <laughs> names, played with them, and mourned their loss. This was the moment the dog transformed from a biological tool into a friend. Let's go! As humankind spread across the continents, their loyal companions traveled with them. In each new environment, from scorching deserts to frozen tundras, new challenges arose and humans began to consciously select and breed dogs that had the best traits for that environment. This was the largest genetic engineering experiment in human history. For sledding in the snow, dogs with strong legs and thick coats were chosen. For hunting in open plains, dogs with long legs and aerodynamic bodies were bred. For guarding livestock, dogs with a strong protective instinct and large size were developed. This artificial selection led to an explosion of diversity, creating the hundreds of breeds we know today, each a living masterpiece of co-evolution. Today, modern science is uncovering the biological foundations of this ancient bond. The dog genome shows that they have specific genetic mutations that lead to hypersociability, a trait that instinctively draws them to interact with humans. Even more amazing is the discovery of the oxytocin loop. When a human and a dog gaze into each other's eyes, the brains of both species release the hormone oxytocin. This is the same hormone that forges the deep bond between a mother and her infant. This reciprocal chemical reaction is unique. Dogs are also masters at understanding our body language and even our facial expressions. They are the only non-primate species that instinctively understands human pointing. It has been a two-way evolutionary street. We shaped them and they shaped us.
From the terrifying shadows of the Ice Age to the warm heart of our modern homes, the journey from wolf to dog is an unparalleled epic of evolution, cooperation, and ultimately, love. Today they serve us in countless roles, as our eyes, our ears, and our protectors. But the most important role they play is that of a friend. They remind us of unconditional loyalty, baseless joy, and the calming presence of the moment. <laughs> The story that began with a hungry wolf and a curious human has become one of the most beautiful and meaningful relationships on planet Earth. The story of an ancient rival who became an inseparable part of our humanity and forever our best friend. 